when you're given uh, data where the values are separated into categories like this, it's pretty common to use a bar graph to represent this work. Here we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So those are separate categories and we might use a bar graph to represent them. And to do that, we set up a title and put the information down and to a setup kind of like this right here. And this is an exact question from a quiz, uh, I mean, excuse me, a New York State test. Um, be sure to, and they even remind you, but it's still easy to forget, title your graph. And they, I've seen them take off more than half credit if you don't do that. So number of phone calls, title, great. Label the axes, what do they mean here? Well, again, there are two axes in a two-dimensional graph like this. So we have here the x-axis down here. So you might have to draw a line in there and then the y-axis right here. Be very careful not to, for example, have these lines tilt and be careful not to have these lines off of the, the zero line. The very first line where you put it needs to be your zero position. So now I have my axes set up but I have to label them and um, put an x and a y and also uh, label them as to what they're referring to. What is the X and Y referring to? This is going to be our X axis and this is going to be our Y axis values right here. How do I know that? Well the X axis um, usually is the independent variable and in this case the days of the week are the independent variable. They're changing and whatever day it is affects the number of phone calls that are happening. So this is the dependent variable. The number of phone calls that were made de depends on the days. So what I'm saying is that the y-axis is usually reserved for dependent variables and the x-axis is reserved for independent variables. But we're not going to write independent and dependent. We're going to write what these things are, be more specific. It's the day of the week on the x-axis and this is the number of calls on the y-axis. So number of calls. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is look at our range for the y-axis um, and that's right here, this step. The key will come to in a moment. Um, the scale for the graph, because if you go by ones for example, you would run out of room and never reach our highest value which is 41. So we want to look at our highest values and our lowest values. That will tell us first of all how, hard we, how far we have to go. 41 seems to be the highest while 14 is the lowest and our range is the highest minus the lowest and 41 minus 14 well 41 minus 10 is 31 minus 4 more is uh, 27 and that's our range. We have to go 27 spaces 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well it looks like we don't have enough right here so um, they allow us to introduce something called uh, well. I guess I don't know what it's called, but I call it the squiggle. What you do is you put a wrinkle in the line, like right here. The wrinkle looks something like that. And what that tells me is that, yes, zero is down here, but then you make a big jump. And that jump could be anything you want. It could be 100 places, it could be 5 or 10. Um, we need to go all the way up to 41, and our first value is 14. So let's have this jump perhaps start at 10, and then we'll go up by 5 from there. That should be more than sufficient. So here's 10, 15, 20, oops. Now look what I did right here. This line slanted, that's no good. Um, it, it's very easy to lose track of what um, value is at a line if you're not very particular with what you're doing. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and we're good. Um, and notice I didn't use the whole graph. Perhaps it would have been better to go by um, a smaller number than fives, but I like fives, it's a nice whole number. Now this is a bar graph, and these are days of the week, it's not numbers, so we can really jump and give spaces wherever we need to here in order to represent our work. But this is a double bar graph, we have these two um, weeks going on, these week categories, <coughs> and that's where our scale, um, our key will come in in a moment. So let's start by graphing. Uh, let's get Monday in there. We have to get Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, five days. And if we do two spaces for each, we need at least two. Two, four, six, eight, 
10. We have more than enough space. So let's leave two spaces here and have this little block represent Monday. Since both blocks are Monday, I'll draw a line right in the middle and write an M for Monday. And then skip one Tuesday. That's for these two columns. Wednesday. Thursday. TH. And then Friday. Now, if you don't like this, if you feel like it's too cluttered, you have other options. One option is to leave a little bit less space. I'll leave one block here, and then let these two represent Monday. One, two for Monday, leave a space, and then these two for Tuesday. And it might fit, so we're going every other two now. One, two, Wednesday. One, two, Thursday. One, two, Friday. And it looks like we have enough space. So if that's our choice, we can stick with it. And let's now graph the data. And they remind us to do that right here. So on Monday, in week 1, there were 38 calls, and week 10, there were 23. So the calls went down, the first bar should be higher than the second. How do we do this? Well, you would have a ruler handy and draw a line from 0 up to 38. You have to estimate here, but just be consistent. That's our first bar. And then the next one is 23, so that's, uh, here's 25, so 23 is about a little, little bit less, a little bit more than halfway between 20 and 25. So you're going to connect the bar, just like that, and I'm going to move this line over a little bit, there we go. So these two bars are from Monday, and this is week 1 and week 10. The problem is we don't know how to distinguish one from the other, so that's where our color key comes in. And you're not going to have many colors available, but you can make a key. And the way we can distinguish without color is by pattern. For example, a blank bar, you can write like this, will equal week one. And perhaps a bar with lines in it <coughs> will equal week ten. So here's my week ten. I'll put some lines in it. Now we know it's week ten. Now on Tuesday, let's take a look at what our data is. Um, telling us on Tuesday they're 41 and then 17 so this would be our, our highest bar a little bit past 40 that's for week 1 and then for week 10 we had 17 about here and again be careful even um, though you and I understand the point of this you should really be careful not to leave any gaps that's Tuesday we'll come back and uh, label it later and Wednesday we had 36 and then 20. 36 is probably about right here. Thirty-six, close the gap, and twenty right in the line. There we go. Try to fix any gaps. You were using an eraser, I'm just gonna move these things. Thursday, we have 29 and 19. 29. And close the bar. And 19 down here. Should fix that bar. <coughs> Excuse me. Right there. And then Friday we have 32 and 14. So on Friday we have 32 right up there. Close the bar. And 14 right below 15. And when they're looking through this, and when you look through it, make sure that things make sense like the 14 should it's not going to be exactly at where 14 should be our scale isn't that accurate but it definitely should be below 15 you can look for that kind of stuff and then make sure you label the bars this key so notice again this is a bar graph we have categories at the bottom you might hear the word histogram thrown around a histogram is for number ranges not so much categories Oops, number ranges so like instead of um, days of the week if we had ages of people, 
like from zero to nine years old. In week one, they made 38 calls. In week 10, they made 23. And then 10 to 20, it would be a consistent throughout. You'd have ranges of numbers, and there could not be gaps in between. On this double bar graph, there can be gaps in between. It's okay, as long as you're consistent. And make sure that zero goes right here at the corner. There aren't two zeros. It's right here at the corner. So in this situation, we have companies that are selling these two products for a profit. So we have the products and the profit. Profit's how much you make after your expenses. So you made something, you have to pay to make it, you have to pay for the materials, now you're selling it. Well, how much did you really make after you paid for everything? That's profit. And that's the title of our graph because we don't know anything else. On the x-axis, we have the time or the year. We're dealing with the years. <clears throat> and then on the y-axis, we have a profit in dollars. So we labeled our categories, our axes. We titled it. We set up the axes right here, and we put the x and y. Now we need to provide a good scale. Put the squiggle down, and you can hop right up to 14,000. I know to start at 14,000 because I took a look at my range. 14,000 is my smallest number, 21,500 is my highest, so I want to go up by 2,000. 16, 18,000. You can put dollars, and then to save yourself some time, especially with really large numbers, what you can do is write this. You can write profit <clears throat> in thousands of dollars. So profits. In, and then perhaps save time on the y-axis, you can write profit, and then in thousands. Of dollars. So, for example, instead of writing 14,000, I can start at 14 because that this scale is showing me how many thousands. 14,000 has 14 one-thousand, so you can write, just write 14. And then, so you can keep going, going up by twos. <clears throat> so, 16,000 is 16, 18,000 is 18, 20,000, 20, and then 22,000 right here. So we go up 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. And now we have everything we need to plot, except for the years. Just leave equal space in here for the years. I'll hop four and write 2,000. Hop another four and write 2,001. And then hop another four and get 2,002. We should just write in the line. And then for, let's plot out product A. So 14, 16, 20. Here's 14 and 2,000. 16 and then a little bit over 20,000 and then what we do is connect those dots <coughs> with a line which is why it's called a line graph make sure you use a ruler see so yeah, this is a little bit sloppy you want to fix that so that's our plot for product A and you can label it by writing an A next to it and then for B, we have 20, 21, and then 19. So it's, it's going to start a little bit higher, go up, and then go down. So we're at 20,000 first, at year 2000. And then we move up a little bit to 21,500. And um, notice something's wrong here for me because these dots are about the same, but they should not be. This dot should be a little bit higher, so I'm going to move it up and be careful not to put it at 22,000. So right there. And then I'm going to plot the third point, which is 19,000, which is a little bit below this. So here's 18,000, so 19 would be about here. And in fact, uh, as part of your key, you can think of doing a, a, a dash line between the points instead of doing a different color, because we don't have color as an option. So a dash, would represent a different year. And to really secure that you're being accurate, you could write product B next to it. And for the key, you would write something like this. This line, if I see a line, I know it's product A, and if I see a dash, it's product 